Hi everyone, welcome to our virtual fashion journey. I'm Jasmine and I will be the MC today. And also our designers truly appreciate that you all join this online fashion showcase. And this time, our designer will showcase the feelings of scenery into the fashion conception. And it will be a good time to enjoy the scene in fashion. And I hope you all enjoy the following section. And of course, you all can also comment below as a support to our designer. And let's welcome the first designer, Angeline, to present her work. Welcome, Angeline. Hi, guys. I'm Angeline. Uh, I'm fashion designer from the Ruffles. So today, I'm going to share about my collections, the team name and title next. And uh, it is Women's Wear for the Autumn Winter 2022. So first of all, let me have a brief introduction about the body arts. So uh, nearly these days, I quite into body forms of arts, especially for henna body art form, which is closer to our region and as the significance of Indian culture in Malaysia country. So body arts redefined as a form of uh, contemporary arts, which is a transformation of canvas or artwork into the body visual. In different region and country, there are also different varieties of body arts together with the history behind it. So current generation also define it as a form of fashion. As we can see more often likely the tattoos uh, face paintings, nail arts, piercings, and living, structure, uh, living statues, as well as makeup, also known as a form of body arts. So uh, the rise of the body arts uh, actually is nearly in the 1960s. It, um, it encompasses in different approaches. So uh, nearly this day, I read an article review uh, regarding the body language. Uh, also known as the visual language as well. It was related to a visit to the art museum with a number of cultural and religion body arts amongst the evolutions of this period of times. Like with, without any high techniques to express themselves, in history results shown that the ancient nomads in order to present themselves as a different religion and culture the easiest method will be applying some designs and patterns on their body with some of the natural ingredients. So here's my inspiration. I got myself inspired by the body arts of the Japan and Indian. It is a combination of cultural arts. So as the main focus point, the Gesha as the Japanese cultural, which has lasted until current generation, since the 7th century, in the past of the Gesha, defined as the art for the word Ge, and the word Sha defined as the person. This group of people actually entertain others in order to maintain their survival in the past. So Gesha used to be a non-licensed occupation in the ancient period of Japan. But when it comes to the mid-13th, Gesha seems to have some changes which they were more likely to be entertainers for the nobility and emperor. Whereas for uh, the Indian originated, uh, Indian henna originated from the ancient Egypt, it slowly spread out to the India area. So the applying of henna painting in the ancient Egypt is to avoid the heat or keeping cool from the sun in the dry desert. And it was found that henna plant is a form of medications and cosmetic. It has a healing power of ages. So until it is been spread out to the India known as the Mendi, and it is very old custom and ancient art form of the Asian subconscious. So after I got my inspirations, I slowly come to the ideations, which is the idea development for my design. So it comes to the de de development part, as a focus point on the cultural arts of the Japan, I capture the makeup and the talents of Geisha, like the body curves of their dances, uh, combinations of layering effect 
as an indication meanings of changes. Geisha is recently more likely to be a professional occupation in Japan. Uh, it is a licensed occupation now. And nowadays, geishas in Japan are highly educated with different types of talents since they was a child. So further explain, they are makeup not limited for the entertainers, but as well for other specific events and festival too. So for example, the shiroboshi dances, they also inspire the makeup from the geisha makeup. Whereas for the original, Hena has many meanings for different designs and patterns, such as the flora and fauna, which is mostly seen nowadays. Uh, it actually represents the happiness and joy. The lotus represents the purity and unity, whereas for the dragonflies and butterflies symbolize the rebirth. But in current generations, there is no limitations for the henna pattern design. It is a new art form to us, actually. And there is no limitations for religion as well. So henna currently spread worldwide, like even many people know it as a contemporary tattoos, uh, as a changeable body arts. So I utilize this art form to paint out the history of India, um, including the transformations of the art form, uh, the war, specific events, and even some of the festival they have in current generation as an indications of meaning changes. So comes to the silhouettes of my whole collections, which is the shape of the outfit. As we all know that in the past civilizations always take it serious about the sexuality outfit, which they would cover themselves as full as possible. That is why a uh, lots of layers fabric going around their body. In this collection, the shapes of the outfit are mainly inspired by the Gesha's performance uh, costume. It is more to each line shape, but they are tight fitted since uh, there are lots of layer fabrics going around their body. So I remain the shape of the H line and in a straight cut, but in the loose fitting type, it could be an indications of the bondage in the past. So after I come, uh, after I done with my idea, ideations of the development, I came to my designing, which is some of the idea sketches for my collection. So in this collection, I included visual and graphical body arts. One is more likely to be the dances, which is as previous shown. It is more to dances and visualize body language. This also considered as a form of body arts. Whereas for another will be the body painting, uh, which is more to graphical body arts. This is the reason I make a combination combinations of both cultural arts. For the designing parts, I try to express the meaning of the changes in body culture arts and make it into a mixture and came out with the look of the collection. So after I came out with some of the design, I started to matching with the coloring. I capture the color mainly from the makeup of the geishas, which is the fake mask they call, with the white powder on the face. It's actually a significance of Japan culture, especially for the ohaguro, the blackened teeth. Both this color might brought a feeling of negative, but in Japan, actually, uh, actually for the ancient Japan, it is a sense of women beauty. So there's a set that's black smiles around the world. Blackened teeth actually been imitated by other religions and other country as well, like Thailand. They also have the blackened teeth as they culture as their cultural. Whereas for the brown and red, which are the color mostly seen in henna painting in nowadays, and with the entire combinations like previously shown, I came out the range plan together with the designs, incorporation with the feelings of freedom and improvement in humanity and civilizations. And these are the eight outfits that I 
that I chose from my designs. And these are the four outfits that I'm going to continue with the production. So after I came out with all my technicals, uh, technical stuff, I started to consider about the materials that I chose for the entire collection. Well, obviously will be the sourcing from the Japan and Indian element. Um, in order to pop out the Japan element, I consider the fabrications more to Japanese style as the picture shown at the left side, the texture of joining and breaking point. In Japan known as the Wafu joint fabrics, this is for the henna painting as a base. It actually can pop up the painting and make the texture of the fabric clearer at the same time. For the linen fabric as the main fabric to present out the feelings of classic and Japan style. Whereas for the matte satin fabric, since majority of the geishas, their costumes are made of pure silk, which is quite expensive because of the shiny surface and the flow while they are dancing. So in order to bring out the stiffness and also the shiny surface, mesh satin could be a good preference to carry out the shiny surface at the same time, bring out the stiffness of the garment. So when it comes to pre-starting of the construction, I did some experiment with different directions of the line form, which is from the dancer's body curves. And it's also as a main focus point of my whole collection, together with the re layering technique on the mannequin, ensuring the contrast of the focus point. Whereas for the henna painting, I tested with different brush stroke and the thickness of the ink on different fabric types as well with the color tone. So this is where the twirling comes out through the construction part. So with the experiment previously of the coloring and line directions I had, the results came out shown, shown that the line thickness available from different angles and distance of the painting, which makes me have a thought of breaking down the whole painting into puzzle pieces and match it back into the garment. This is to thicker the line as the picture shown at the right side. At the same time, uh, considerations of fitting on a real human body as well. This is to ensure that the tightness, the space for movement of human body and make some alterations and adjustment to the whole garment. In this part, I did some combination as well with the sampling of the garment using mix and match, which is the just the position, which able to came out with a few different designs uh, as a backup if necessary. So when everything's ready, in order to make it more professional, I did consider about the combinations with the makeup, hairstyling, and accessories. So to make a link each with the concept of the team, uh, so I capture back to the makeup of the geishas, which is the white powder they have, but I make it into a mask, which uh, with the word that represent the whole collections, the freedom of bondage. As for the hairstyling, I referring to the geisha hairstyle, most of their hairstyle are fully tied up, which makes me have a thought of making hairband for simple and clean look. And additionally, I use a hair stick as well to pop up the feeling of classic. Since the base of the geisha makeup is in white color and the ink painting is in red and brown color, which makes me have a thought to have a pair of boots in white with the line drawing in red as a combination as well. And these are some of the elements and tools that go into cooperate with my photo shooting.
So since the whole collection is more likely to be related to the history bondage, so I decided to make the photo shooting poses more to relaxation feeling, uh, chill, and without any scruples as well as relief. And these are some of the reference that I got. And here's some of the behind the scene of the photo shooting. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And this will be some part of the final outcome for the four outfit that I have for my collections. So here I give a conclusion to conclude up the whole collections that it is undeniable that being through the civilization insist the conflict, explorations and innovations between human and humanity. That is why people struggle about the manpower in the past which made lives hard. Conflict appears which created human ignorance, arrogance and war. It also known as a bondage for human in the ancient period. Wars were frequently happened in the past because of conflict between different religion and cultural. That is why we, with a wider range of explorations, with innovations, people started to being understanding, get into with each other's cultural and religions, which brought a better lifestyle for the world. Things change. The past does not equal to now, but now does not equal to the future as well. As seems changes getting better, for now that the pandemic extraud around the world, but in belief what we are experiencing and being through at this moment could be a sign of creating a better future, even though that is unexpected what comes next. So thank you for your attention. I hope you guys enjoy this sharing. So for now, I will pass it to the next speaker. Jasmine, welcome her. So hi everyone, thanks for joining this live. And my name is Ao Jemin, fashion designer from Raffles University. And you can call me Jasmine. So today I will be presenting my mini collection, Women's Wear Ready to Wear Spring Summer 2022 with the theme about the beauty of nature and I name it as RV. So today presentation, I hope to make each of you realize more about the beauty of nature. And now let's start the presentation. So here will be the few main topics that I will be sharing in the following slide. So first of all, let me share about my initial inspiration first before having the collection. So recently, I have read an article about the Biosphere 2, which is a past uh, experiment in America. And I'm interested on it as Biosphere 2 actually provide me about an awareness that how we as a humans destroy the nature and also our lovely planet Earth. And we as the most intelligent species, did we really work well to protect Earth and to protect the place where we born? And Earth is known as the Biosphere 1. So for this experiment, it's named as Biosphere 2. For this experiment, it's an American Earth System Science Research Facilities located in Arizona. And its mission is to uh, serve uh, centers uh, for the researching out searching, teaching, and lifelong learning about the Earth and also its living system and the place in the universe. 
So for this experiment, it remains the largest closed uh, system ever created. And it can be also known as a second earth as it is according to the basic and construction of the earths to come up with this experiment. And this experiment actually is constructed between 1987 and 1991. For this bio two, uh, Biosphere 2, this experiment is originally uh, means to demonstrate the abilities of closed ecological system to support and maintain the human life in the outer space as a substitute for the Earth's biosphere. And it was designed to explore the web of the interactions uh, between the life uh, system and also the structure with different area based on various biological biomes. So in addition to the several biomes and weaving quarter for people, there was an agricultural areas and workspace to study the interactions between humans and also farming, technologies and the rest of the nature as a new kind of laboratories for the study of global ecology. And its mission was about like two years closure experiment with eight participants to take part in this experiment. So through the first experiments, there are most of the vegetable species and virtually all of the pollination insert died. And at the same time, pest issue occurs. So in the halfway of this experiment, due to the insufficient food supply and production, uh, the crew started to eat the seed stock that have not been grown inside the biosphere too. So the oxygen inside also uh, started to reduce during the experiment and the oxygen level reduced from the original 20.9% to the 14.5% after 16 months of the starting date. So the experiment also taken again as soon as possible for the second mission. But at the end of this experiment, Biosphere 2 announced that it failed for uh, both mission and transfer the ownership to the Columbia uh, universities for researching purpose. So from the experiment, uh, the first mission and the second mission included people who participate in actually they do work hard to uh, produce enough food supply from themselves and try to uh, take care of their environments. But due to the issue of the ecosystem inside the experiment uh, cannot support the usage of human and unable to fulfill the needs. So in this situation, is that human become the real pest uh, of the earth? Because in the experiments that after uh, they have announced the failure about the experiment, they actually neglected the experiments for 10 years. But after the 10 years, they returned back to the experiment. They actually found out that, oh, the past issue is uh, sorted and all the ecosystem back to balance and some of the animal species that did alive. This is all happened after human decide to left. So is it we as the human, we become the real pest in the earth and environment that as we tend to destroy the nature? And the team I named it as are we is kind of like questioning ourselves. Is that we put on the efforts to uh, actually realizing the beauty of nature and care on it? And are we the actual pest to this lovely planet that we have and we live at? So let me give an example, very simple example that we uh, relate to the latest global issue, the pandemic for now. Last year, around March, a lot of countries take action to prevent the splitting of virus. Uh, they decide to fully lock down and every one of the uh, residents stay at home and then we will not having any human activity, we just stay at home. And then there's something chanced and happened to our planet. Just within a few hours after lockdown, 70% of reduction on global traffic noise. And after the 12 days of lockdown, Los Angeles have the best air quality in the past 40 years. And then also, China air pollution level dropped by half. And also the country that we know as the most polluted country in India surprisingly met the Himalayas which is 200 km away, appear in human vision. And all of the reduction of the travelers and tourists make the wildlife get a chance to recome their land. And all these changes actually happen when all of us stay at home and without any human activities. So 
let me talk about our earth actually we are having a two lungs one is forest as we most of us know and one is ocean and most of us think about that forest is the one where oxygen will come from by neglected contributions of ocean they are both important and beautiful so ocean actually cover over 70 percent of earth's surface and carry out about 50% of the global primary production and support the greatest bio, uh, biodiversities on the planet. And they are also one of the largest carbon uh, reservoirs in the Earth system, holding up to 54 times more carbon than the atmosphere. So with this, scientists estimate that there are 50 to 80% of the oxygen production on Earth come from the, Earth, uh, come from the oceans. So the majority of this production is from oceanic planktons and some of the bacteria in the ocean because they uh, undergo the photosynthesis. And next, we talk about the coral reef in the ocean. Coral reef, when we first think about, it is a very beautiful scene in the ocean world. But coral reef is not only provide beauty to our world, but they are a significant components in our ocean ecosystem. I thought that coral reef look like uh, tree structures and they are living organism. They like others living organism too, they need to eat. And also, coral reef are one of the most beautiful marine ecosystems they have. And every physical features of a certain environment like sand, rocks and water, for example, are all of the living creatures in the areas make up an ecosystem. And there's an interesting fact that, and also a very important uh, fact concerning about oxygen production is that land, pan, uh, land plant, which means uh, like forest, is only produced about one per three of the oxygen we breathe, and coral are producing the rest of the oxygen breathe. Since that, I get inspired from the, all these like oceans, uh, things, ocean living organisms, and then I will pick all these uh, elements as my collection into uh, my garments and come up with the actors. So first of all, I will select uh, one of the zootopia, uh, zooplankton, which is uh, also contribute to the ocean ecosystem and planet jellyfish. So in this video, as you can see that jellyfish moving and create a slow, soft, flowy movement and kind of like a beautiful scenes created. With this, I extract the movement that created by the jellyfish, which is flowy feelings into my collection to emphasize the beauties of wildlife in ocean. Besides, when we think about ocean, first thing come to mind will be wave. We've created the scenes of layering, movement, sequence, and some nature flow. Actually, it inspired me to add it into my collections to make the collection like create with strong movement to reflect the beauty of oceans. Also, Cora. Cora act as a very important flow in ocean, which contribute the most to the ecosystem. So coral reef appear just like the forest under the water and provide the habitat to small organisms. So with this arrangement of coral, the texture is transformed and then applied to the collection. And now let me share about the color palettes that I picked to use uh, into my collection. So I have chosen the uh, softer tones to combine the cools and warm tones. So first of all, I'm choosing the blue, soft blue colors to uh, represent the ocean. And the soft pink is to represent the uh, jellyfish and coral. Besides, I'm also using some soft khakis to uh, merge the pinks and blue tones too. So after all this uh, conforming the colors, it is time to move on to the idea developments and transform into design and uh, real garments. So idea development is the process that helped me to transform my inspired elements into design elements and also into a silhouette and also come up with a garment. So let's see my initial idea development. 
So firstly, I'm, use, I'm using the uh, jellyfish to show the flowy movements and create the soft textures with a curved moving line. And also I apply the colors that I have fitted in my color palettes too. Then ocean wave. Ocean wave is one of the uh, inspired elements that I have picked. So I try to transform the movements of it to, into my uh, garments and the flare create like a flowy things. So with this, I come up with some flare placements as a samplings also to find the feelings of the floor flare that can be applied onto my collection. After that, the other element, Cora. Uh, Cora, we first think of it, it will be like very hard, uh, rough. But in this collection, I wish to make it into like softer, flowy movement created. And it moves with a natural flow during wearing on it. So that I start to test like few sampling to uh, create the final looks. So here is some of the uh, ideals that I have come out to have the samplings that I want. So at the end, I try and come up with my own way to create a Cora shape and with a uh, soft texture, which is like a hand make one by one. So in this slide, you can see there's a process of creating a soft texture Cora lights netting ball. So from first, you can see there's a hard netting, uh, which is the red colors one, and the black colors uh, come out with the other shape, but then it's still a very hard material. So I started to find a softer material and at the end, I choosing the netting fabric, which is a very soft netting fabrics to create the looks of the Cora and the movements of the Cora into like a napping board. And this is the method that I designed to create this handmade netting board. So actually it quite take time, but it looks really as what I want to apply onto the collection and come up with the feelings. So I feel like it's worth to spend a lot of time on creating all these uh, ideas. And next, we come to the Silowax decisions. So uh, Silowax need to be very uh, matched on your collection and the feelings that you want. So for Silowax, I'm choosing the Wabi Sabi Silowax, which is uh, emphasis the loose and finished edge and nature flow to apply onto my collection. So as you can see, I'm using the strap and slight A line, which is a uh, loose fitting to come up with the feelings that I want, which is like loose, relaxing flow uh, onto the collections. And after that, it's come to a uh, sketching part. So here's some of my sketching before I'm going to the final uh, ones onto the collections. So here's sketches, sketches, and after that, all of these sketches and then we will pick a final eight outfit as the collection. So this is the front uh, range plan and the back range pad. And here will be the four looks that we pick to uh, make it out as the mini collections and front view, also the back view. So let's move, uh, let us move on to the twirling part, which is a very important process to ensure the fit of the garments and the overall looks. So this is my first uh, look, which is look one. Uh, I did about two twirls to ensure the final fit uh, match with my illustration and also to ensure the flow that I want to create it and apply and giving out to the audience too. And next, about the two, two I also coming out with two twa. So first one, as you can see, I'm using the calicos to make it out. So you can see at the shoulder part, there's empty, no flare, and no and seam at it, uh, at it in. But I feel like it's not enough with the flare. So uh, in the second twa, I add up to show more volume. So I add in the seam and uh, in the flare so that you can see uh, the blue colors one there's a flare at the shoulder part so it come up with a more volume flare so it create the flow and the third one it is the uh, top cap with a uh, a-line skirt so for this top i created with full flare toward the neck and cover the neck area which is like strong emphasis the layering part too and lastly, the final look is uh, 
the two piece set also. Uh, it is top and a full length pen. So this is treated with two version of the slight flat effect that apply on the pants. So as you can see that one uh, pen is with only single seam insert with flat and one is set in with two more seam to volume up the amounts of the flat. So at the end, uh, the volume versions is more suitable and able to create the feelings of connecting to the top sleeve. So after toiling, it's come to an actual making as a final piece. And this is the look one specifications drawing and as a fat drawing. So fat drawing is a uh, means to include all garments detailings. It's all like 100% same as the actual one. So this is a spec drawing. And also uh, the actual looks of the look ones, which is the final garments. And look two uh, spec drawing. So you can see that uh, all this is uh, the netting ball that we also need to draw it in into the technical drawing too. And here is the actual looks. So for this uh, netting board, as I mentioned just now, it is all handmade and uh, sew it one by one with a very fine stitching. And next is the uh, looks for uh, spec drawing, which is a top cap and a uh, airline skirt. Also, this is the actual outfits of it. And lastly, this spec drawing is for the look five, which is the top and the full length pants. So. For this is actually a netting uh, fabric, so it's covered by the netting board around the body. Also, for this is uh, extra outfits, uh, which is the uh, final outfit. And then this will be the final looks of my mini collection. I named it as RV Women's Wear Ready to Wear Spring Summer 2022. So as you can see, uh, the fabrication is about like soft lightweight to create the flowy feelings throughout the whole collection. So with this uh, collection will be like emphasis about the strong flowy movement on the wearer. Next, let's enjoy my short slideshow or my lookbooks. So after viewing on my lookbook, I believe that you all may realize some background design, makeup, and tone, right? So as to match up my design concept, I did come with a shooting smooth board so that to make my collection show up more. So firstly, let's talk about the makeup first. I decided to have the makeup which is more to like soft pinks uh, to match up with the collection color palettes and not to be too heavy makeup in the order to uh, prevent the makeup cover over, uh, cover over the garments kind of like overlap. So did you all notice that uh, I added some pierce onto the face is actually to emphasize the feelings of ocean as well. And for the background part, uh, the dark blue uh, background is to contrast the colors between the backgrounds and garments. So as my garments is mainly uh, more to soft tone, so that I'm using a contrast uh, color, which is dark colors to uh, make the garments stand out. And also uh, there is some used plastic as the background is to represent the pollutions that we did to the ocean so that the garment act as a like an ocean life to that need to live with all this pollution and rubbish that we make. So and after all of my sharing and artwork, I have prepared a little videos about the process of making up this collection and come to the final piece. And also as a reference for you all who still wondering like 
what is fashion design. And I hope you all enjoy it. Every time people ask me about what course am I learning, I answer fashion design. They will be then like, oh, designing only? I will try to explain that I do know how to make up a garment and then they will be like so surprisingly, oh, you also know how to sew and you learn? Yes, as students of fashion design, the future designer we all learn making up a garment. But it is not only design and sewing. Before we come to a collection, we will get inspired by certain topics, things, environments, and anything that will inspire us. The inspiration is the starting point, and the point that makes you apply onto your garment. Transform your inspiration message onto a cool a collection. I start to get more ideas and collect images that related to design concept. Brainstorming, idea developing, watching image, transform elements and all happen in your schedule. Idea development can be also in 3D form. We call it as sampling. All this sampling might not be all used in your design, but it is the process of transforming the idea and show your idea development and progress of your designing stage. Sampling is interesting and make your idea into 3D. Then sketching that stop sketching, kind of idea jump out and sketching. Designing garment, apply your sampling, you develop the elements onto your sketching. 25 sketches, 50 sketches, and even 100 sketches bring more ideas. Coloring and pick a suitable color palette to suit your collection to make it outstanding, contrasting, stunning, and try different versions of colors matching onto your collection and pick the frame. Designing need to know about fabrications to mention that your design match up with the fabrication. And the flow, creating the movement, lightweight as the fabrication for my collection. And to sew up the garment is not easy. You will need to draft, drap, paper or mannequin. And cutting the fabric is also a building state that you need to be careful to not damage your fabric and actually the cutting line is accurate. And then only proceed to the sewing section. We measure, calculate, we teams to ensure the seam aligned, not moving, not running off, and pick the right needles, tension, stitching line, and track as detailed as possible to ensure the designer produce outstanding and high quality gun. So up a garment not mean that we come to the end. Toiling is then another important step to double check your cutting fitting part, size, effect of the design that you want, it will take time and it can be more than one time of twirling fitting, but it could not be skipped. After a successful final fitting, designer will then able to proceed to final garment sewing process. Not all the garment is sewing by machine. Some part can be also with handmade. Some of the detailing take time and patience to come up with the final best result and designer create it with care, with heart, and with the belief to transform their mind onto the gun. And as a fashion designer students, we not only learn about design, we learn about sewing, construction part, and we also learn about branding onto the design, market the product. We create our own brand labor, also another achievement on ourselves. The collection born after the long time creating with patience of the designer, then the last part will be presenting to the audience about the designer work. Photo shooting will be the last part that helps to present the work to the public. Shooting can be as detailed as to mix up the collection concept from the background, makeup, hairstyle are all important to suit the collection or the gown. Posing also can be affecting the look of the garment, so it needs to match up the collection overall feelings to bring out the most accurate message of the collection to the audience and public. So fashion design is not only about design. It also a channel to let the designer send out their mind, their own message to the public through a collection. So after watching the video, let me have a short conclusion before ending. 
So in conclusion, uh, I hope that through my collection, I'm able to let each of you who join this live or who watch this live later realize that we as humans, we did having a lots of beautiful scenes around us and we live in this such a wonderful planet. And human as the most intelligent species, save it, not destroy it. Thank you. And also, I appreciate to have you all here listening to my sharing. And thanks. Now, let's pass the speech to the next designer, Nicole. Hi, I'm Nicole. Good afternoon, all. And I'm from BFD. Today, I'm going to present about my mini collection with you guys, which is Spring and Summer 2022 Women's Wear Collection. And let me share with you my inspiration. My inspiration have come from the Japanese elements, which are Japanese architecture and koi fish, the national fish of Japan. The combination of Japan architecture and koi fish, I call it the creation by nature. In my thought and my ideation come first, architecture built by human and koi fish and human also the creation by God or can say built by nature in the first time. Why I'm using architecture? Because architecture was our habitat and it is also representative of the prosperity of the human. And common ground for those elements, it's all about beautiful and wonderful life, life that give us opportunity to use it. Japanese traditional architecture is the, is the most unique and distinct feature of culture. Learn to love life, to appreciate and thanks for the nature given. Creatures appear only need some luck, some materials and mix with some elements and then the creature create it. And then sometimes they will give you a lot of inspiration or behind the story, which is amazing to me, even though the man's work and the thought, it show the different about and then come to the silhouette. First impression is come from the architecture. You can see the example of the traditional architecture is a boxy silhouette, which leads me to the 1960, the boxy silhouette, the golden period. The boxy silhouette, it is popular in the 1960 century in the Sweeney era. Givenchy baby doll dress has the image by a dream of woman who was free and no longer constrained by layers and layers of fabric. And the woman say political freedom is synonymous with sexual freedom and physical freedom. And also I want to express which are women who are brilliant, smart, chill, relaxed, can do anything you want. And this is the another Japanese architecture, but in modernized also come with a boxy silhouette that to put me the overall look of the collection to be a boxy silhouette and then so now i will play the video it is about to show out the only some part progressing of the project by using pencil marker concept and fabric to play around to get more idea to let me move on to the next step so now i will play the video So come to the development part, I'm using textile pattern and color of the fabrication to emphasize the point which is the pleated technique come from the Japanese architecture texture when it is transformed into the fabric and the Japanese national flower which is sakura also to emphasize the terms about the Japanese. Next come to the Japanese architecture which which is 
Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, I transform it to the sleeve part to make it solid and stand out. Come to the outer wear, the pattern of the pattern cutting uh, has come from the koi fish pattern. The gathering part come from the previous Japanese architectures, rooftop pattern, which is the Yoshimon rooftop down four side and connect with the rig at the top. And the picture show on the slide. And the symmetric ideal has come from the pattern on the back of the koi fish. To emphasize the pattern, I'm going to use the binding technique to outline the pattern. So you can see about the pocket there, the idea has come from the small pattern at the back of the koi fish. And link it back to the previous, uh, previous uh, Japanese architecture. The side of the rooftop come with the pattern that lead me to button that come with pattern too. The pattern about the flora is representative of vitality. The silhouettes come from the baggy at the bottom and the strap come with bias cut and it is a bit bending uh, to meet the smooth and curve of the architecture because of the because of the silhouette of the architecture, Kushu National Museum is in Japan. And drop and plate has an architecture rooftop of the Japan, which is Kyoto Station symmetrical pattern come from the koi fish pattern. And I'm going to using the pattern and play around with the just the position. And after going through the development process, progressing, now I will share with you guys about my first development with using fabric and play around with. In this stage, uh, same, I pick the common ground of them and play around, which is the uh, pattern from koi fish and pleated from the architecture. Play with the cutting and shape. And the video is showed uh, the development And this is the second stage of my development. It's about the just the position them. It can be one piece in one loop or more than that, or can be able to play with supreme imposing them. After that, I arrange properly and give them color and fabric to see them which is the best uh, type setting. And this page is also the same as previous. This stage is about to play with the placement to see which is the best range plan and uh, it is just a draft for this stage. After that, I'm using first and second loop pieces. The only six pieces from two loop that come from the previous range plan that you can see at the picture show bottom. And then just the position them to make the another two look. After that, they come with color and fabric too. Continuous play and come with color and fabric so that uh, for all for the development part. So this is my latest range plan is born. Uh, each come from the development and this is my front range plan. And this is my back range plan. Uh, but only four of them look uh, must make it out for our collection. And next, let me introduce my fabric and color board. Fabric come with a cotton and cotton polyester. Color in white, black and various pink because of the printer Sakura. Using texture, pattern and color, color to emphasize idea, the fabric like drape on something to represent the architect before they make the building up. They need a draft plan so that printed cotton is to represent the draft plan. And next come from the materials part. Those materials come with the collection, which is bias tape for the finishing uh, to emphasize the pattern for the garment and very simple to meet the 
meet which is the suitable for the garment. Interfacing and after spray button, only white and red supplies allowed in the collection to meet the ideation. And next, uh, I will apply heavy interfacing and bonding to support the shape and stand the sleeve up. And bra cup insert into the bodies, snap button can help to stay in place. And next, the snap button I will apply on my first loop and my fourth loop. And for the first loop, I will apply the snap button on the shoulder part. And for the fourth loop, I will apply the snap button at the armpit part to give the stability and would not be easy to drop. And during the tour, I face problem too with my fourth loop sleeve. And the sleeve can possible stand up even though I put two layers of hard interfacing and I know uh, that will not give two layer of interfacing for the garment. Uh, I just want to try it and I try it on and then also cannot be stand it. So after that, I try to draft my sleeve to become curve shape and then like uh, fifth and sixth images. So, uh, oh, sorry. So for the final twa, I give boarding, boarding to have extra and keep the sleeve stand and it show at the last picture. Next, I'm using drafting and draping technique applied to my third loop bodies. And I found it out 1.5 cm of pleated is more suitable for my collection. And this is uh, about my second look outfit. The top three picture, the outerwear is unfunctional, uh, well walking, and the shape uh, is not possible to be sharp at the shoulder. After the improvement, it goes smooth at the shoulder, and then the arm part uh also goes smooth and then functional again come to the posting for shooting the post and movement i want to be casual relaxed and chill feeling that you can see i want the feeling that the posting bot uh tell me and for the makeup part i'm also uh come with the posting bot because i look out to the posting bar, I look the makeup and then it's uh, come from like nature makeup because of my uh, collection. So I put the red color to my daily makeup. So come to the shooting part, uh, black, white and red is the main color because of the garment, also the lighting too. Bottom angle shoot, background in texture that I want to uh, show. And this is my shooting result. It is related to post posting, makeup, lightning, accessories, and clothing. Apply with daily makeup, random, relaxed, and chill posting. Uh, bottom angle shoot, white texture, background, clean and clear. And let me share and play with you guys uh, behind the scene. It is so fun and hope you guys enjoy it.
That's all for the video and let me have a short conclusion before I pass it to the next speaker. Sometimes we will question our own uh, assistance when the rest of the world is happy but you are not. Uh, please do not give up and you may be confident again. Uh, we must continue to move forward in the extreme of life after the deep down research that I found it out the better of me and found out how wonderful creatures appear no matter with which methods. It just all awesome enough and it changed me to see another point of view. And thank you for my uh, sharing and that's all for my sharing. Thank you. So next I will pass it to the next speaker which is uh, we need. Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm going to share my fashion portfolio with you guys as a guide of the journey with of my mini collection. So my name is Winnie and my 2022 spring and summer unisex ready to wear collection is named Yokai in the crowd. As this semester inspiration is about Japanese, I get to focus on Japanese folklore. It is one of the oldest history of Japan. The story of the old that uh, people in Japan has told since their beginning. These tales were driven from literature, literature such as India and China. The story would then be modified and adapted to fit Japanese sensibilities. According to the writing, since the ancient time, the Japanese have lived with super situation of strange present and phenomenon known as yokai. Japanese believe that the yokai appeared at the beginning of the world as God's creation, as one day God Izanagi purified himself in the sea. When he finished his bath and started to dry his body, each falling drops of water soaked into the soil and imbues the land with supernatural potential. Thus, the yokai was born. During the Edo period comes to the golden age of yokai, where new technologies like printing press allow, allow regional folklore to spread. However, yokai almost disappeared following the period when Japan was swept up in a mania for modernization. But thanks to animation over recent years, the popularity of anime has grown consistently worldwide. With the popularization of anime, the yokai became known to the Western public. As Japanese folklore has deeply rooted the nation's genes and inspired them. As most, Japanese anime incorporate the use of Japanese folklore and is riddled with yokai and supernatural beings. The genes has been widely accepted due to its unconventional nature. I get inspired by the rich imagination and spiritual of Japan's yokai culture and the history of writing that has shaped yokai study as a field. Yokai is a class of supernatural monster and spirits in Japan's Japanese folklore. The characteristics of yokai range diversely from malevolent to mischievous and titles believed to cause misfortune and harm, and to those who are considered to be good fortune and to those who encounter them. Yokai often possess animal features, but may also appear humanoid in appearance. Some yokai resemble imitate objects 
while others have no discernible shapes. Your kind is typically described as having spiritual or supernatural abilities, with shape-shifting being the most common trait associated with them. To start the idea development, I choose eight different types of yokai with the aim of reforming the elements of yokai into human government. Most of the yokai I selected shares a more similar form with human when compared to others. The Futakuchi Ona, a woman who are characterized by its two mouths, a normal one located on her face, like what we have, and a second one on the back of the neck beneath the hair. Kisune, folks that have the ability to shape shift into men or women, they often have more than one tail. The max can go to nine tails. Raburokubi almost look completely like human with one difference, a stretchable neck. And then we have the Tingu who takes the form of birds of prey. And they are traditionally despite with both human and urban characteristic. Oni who looks, uh, who are typically portrayed as huskling figures with one or more horns growing out their heads. The Hone Ona Bone Woman, as her name said, is nothing more than a skeleton who tricks men by portraying herself as an attractive woman. Nure Ona resembles a rich creature with the head of a woman and a body of a snake. The last we have the Enera, a yokai that is made out of smoke. It resides in bonfires, and when it emerges, it takes the form of a human. By listing out each of their individual uniqueness, ranging from their appearance, like silhouettes and colors, to their characteristic, I'm able to collect many ideas of development that I can use to further my design elements later. My first way of developing idea is to create my own yokai by combining the unique characteristic from the original yokai. I came up with these eight new creatures and I'll be using their figure as a guide to draw my sketches later. The second way is to further analyze the unique character collected from the original yokai where I came up with several fabric manipulation that can represent the yokai elements. However, since the elements are too much from the eight yokai, I have to subtract some of the ideas by moving them into other fields like color palettes and fabrication. I'll explain how I did it in more detail later. With respect to yokai who are classified as and ancient creatures. The silhouette of the collection implies the traditional Japanese coding with a mix of our current day-to-day -day outfit concept. Traditionally, kimono was 12 layers. My design pieces adopt the same layering concept as well, but in an indirect way. Since 12 layers are very heavy and is not going to work as a ready-to-wear collection. As the silhouette of both Japanese men and women kimono looks similar, thus making a unisex collection, the garments are loose and easy to adjust for sizes in order to make the garment able to fit into both genders. Inspired by the silhouette of Yokai Rokurokubi, the stretchy long neck woman, all the arrows on the right are the same height. However, the magic Y creates the feeling of height as the eye is guided upward with nothing impede its vertical motion and make the figure appear longer and taller. The first of this collection are thanks to this theory too. The second inspiration is the Futakuchi, the two function mouth woman. 
to acute the image of a functioning mouth and open mouth, the pattern pieces are designed, drafted differently. They are being fair at a certain areas to create this mouth open, opening image on the garment. Inspired by the shape and textures of yokai, the first one, Kisune, the fox that have nine tails. A weaving pleated fabric manipulation can very well mimic the picture of the moving tails. The layer pleated effect also adds shadows and highlights to make the tails pop up. Tengu, the iconic wing, a flare pleated fabric manipulation which looks like a feathered wing, a way to add a 2D wing figure without creating a 3D wings that stick out of the garment as that will be very inconvenient. Next, we will have the Hone Una, the bone woman. I applied three different ways to make these bony feelings penetrate my whole collection as it is the easiest way to show the yokai concept when compared to designing in animal form. The 3D effect is a must as it has to be obvious. Not only that I use the human bone as an inspo, thanks to the Nure Ona, the half snake woman, I also adapt the snake bone structures too. By combining both, making the skeleton image of this yokai specifically. The colored palette mostly come from Oni. A Japanese demon. They came in a variety of colors, red, blue, green, black, and white. Each color has some meaning. Red means averse, degreeness, and devour. Blue means anger, irritation. Black means complaint, waver, hesitate. Green means aggrance, excite, while white means impose and repine. When it comes to fabrication, Ensu Mengs Tumingi is a handmade and rare fabric of Shizuoka from Japan, drawing an origin from the Edo period, which is the golden age of the yokai. So maybe the yokai are wearing government using this fabrication during that time, if you believe. Well, I can't find any kind of this fabric in Malaysia during this pandemic, I tried to get a similar stripe fabric. It makes with 100% cotton, which works best in the fabric manipulation I choose in this collection. Needs in pleats, and because it's thicker than other fab fabrics, it feels luxurious as well. Well, the use of black and white lines can affect figures from Rokurobugi. Horizontal lines carry the line across. Vertical lines move the lights, the eyes upward. The longer your eyes can travel upward without interrupt by a horizontal line, the taller the figure will appear, which stretch the look in some way. Not to forget the snake element from Nure Ona, the half snake woman, Using this snake skin scale in letter, of course, is main make PVC, so no scale is hurt in this collection. After summarize the idea, I start to make sample of them you to see if all these really work. And from there, I start to mix and match my fabric manipulation to see if they look good together and I end up abandoning some of them to get the collection look, look smoother together. With the guide of my lecture, I'm able to come up with 200 different design sketches in a few creative ways, from black and white hand sketch to illustration mix and match, and then to manipulating 3D twa. After that, we have to move on and select the final egg design out of them. Choose four to bring the yokai out into the real world. 
My problems in development are mainly in the drafting section. As you can see, my first two are really out of the place. In this stage, I'm still experiencing the silhouette and shapes of government, trying to get the best shape from 2D patterns pieces to 3D shape. That's why you can see half of the silhouette curves. You can only see half of the silhouette curves. Everything is just in an experience stage. A good time was to get the best shape that I wanted on the first try and I can process to make the full toy. Well, the bad times were that I have to make several times drawing pattern pieces, cut the fabric and sew it out to see if it's not the desired shape and the process recycled. Luckily, I have my very experienced lecturer. She can always know how to acquire my desired shape and points out the required drafting techniques easily. With her guidance, I'm able to continue with my look on the right track. Once I settle my drafting problem, I get to experience with different fabrication as I'm using five different kinds of fabrication from natural fibers like polyester, cotton, and linen to man-made PVC and chiffon. And thank God that everything works fine so that I can process to my actual pieces. Your kind in the club. Blending into the community is the topic I want to address in this collection. I designed several projects with this phenomenon in mind. We spend our life watching and responding to others. This process is most commonly discussed regarding a minor culture adopting elements of the majority culture while still retaining their own distinct culture. They are finally turned to people, we are finally turned to people around us, relying on each another for clues about how to behave so that we can efficiently neg navigate ourselves into the social environment. You have almost certainly experienced it. Unsure what to do in a situation, you look around to see what others are doing and change your behavior to match. Going along with the crowd is a natural and often useful tendency. As humans evolve to live in groups, since earlier on, we needed ways to smooth interactions, reduce conflict, and coordinate actions. Conforming to the group can be a matter of survival. The other reason people comfort and go along with the crowd is that we all wanted to be liked and accepted. The desire to fit in is so strong that people sometimes conform to a group even when it goes against their own judgment. When people act differently from the majority, we tend to think he or she is odd. In this collection, Yokai the monster acts as the role of the odd ones. Minor culture, for example, like goof and LGBT, are often being unacceptable or not understanding by the public. Yet they still stand their own way and be themselves. Mixing into the community and live their life. In my opinion, being different from the majority is a very hard decision. And standing firmly for your own characteristic needs lots of courage. Because doing all this is going against our genes. To acknowledge and show my admiration to those who who are doing yourself and wearing your own style is the aim of this collection. Encouraging more people to be brave is my aim and the goal of my brain restyle. Wearing your own style might get lots of criticism from people, but don't allow others to change who you are. You are being judged regardless of what you want to do. 
So be being yourself makes happier, easier to obtain. Live life on your terms, not someone else. Being yourself is important because you will not be happy otherwise. As I mentioned, blending into the crowd while keeping the unique characteristic, be accepting and learning to enjoy every culture because each of them is the art of life. Less judgment, more appreciation. Not mentioning about the gender anymore, just fashion, just clothing. Not male or female government, just human clothes as one. These are the illustration of the four look that I have made up. Ready to wear clothing is something we will wear the most during our life. We do not need any special event to dress up and express ourselves. Knowing and being yourself is something we should do every day. Before showing you the actual government, I would like to share about my photo shooting moods. The style of shooting is applying this red light effect. The idea comes from this photo where we can easily spot the red person in the middle is definitely the odd one. Thus, using this lighting effect can further deliver my concept of being the odd ones. In respect to those yokai supernatural being shape-shifting, and to emphasize the Japanese yokai, I followed the traditional Japanese makeup style with a twist of Kisune, the nightail fox facial feature, the foxy eyes makeup. Well, the second makeup look is mainly inspired by the Nure Ona, the half snake woman, with its hesitate being wet and muddy. I kind of mimic the look of by imaging one living in such a place with the glitterness, glitter shim shimmering as a wet surface. Well, for the pose, I mainly follow those Japanese traditional art pose, but blend in some of the book pose to better, better show the construction of the government and also to represent the proudness of being owed to the public. Since my mom is super nervous about the COVID-19 and all those Delta virus, I can't get to find any outsiders like photographer, makeup artists, or models to help in my shooting. Or else I have to quarantine alone for two weeks. So I did everything myself. For the accessories, I made from jewelry, I made some jewelry with my leftover beads from other projects. Therefore, the element of the beads might not very suit the swipe, the style of this collection. However, by following the color palette of this collection, I'm able to make up some of them and make them go along with the look as well. I also make a bucket head and attach some netting to it to suit my looks. Look one is a t-shirt-like dress with layered belts. This look is especially called Kisune, the night tail fox, for some good reason. The Kisune dress is my imaginations of a fox tail emerged from the back and covered the body with them. See the illustration of the dress, the whole body of the dress is being drafted in nine pieces, linking the back to the front, which means the dress does not have any sex seams to interrupt the lines. Each tail pieces is overlapping one another to create the pleats, thus making the layer pops up even more. In order to wear this dress without lower the neckline, I have to add an opening onto the dress. 
As I mentioned, I did not want any extra seams to interrupt the tail's pattern. Therefore, I added a invisible zipper around the shoulder. The belt is designed with a fox hat on it. Since I want to go for a traditional feeling, I have to use as little fastening elements as I can. So I used this slot and tap technique to fasten the belt inset. Comes to the most exciting part, the sleeve. In order to let the bony feeling penetrate my whole collection, I added this spiral spine bone fabric manipulation onto this look. For this, the sleeve is drafted in a spiral way, making the seam looking at an angle of 45 degrees. Look 2 is a set of three pieces. A hoodie jacket, a v-neck corset, and a tie-up pant. This look is called Oni, the Japanese demon. It is look quite antisocial in my opinion and might be always up to something hiding under that giant hood. Let me explain. The hoodie jacket has a hidden design inside the hood. It is one of the bony fabric manipulation. It's similar to the sleeve in my first look, but drafted dif in a different way. As you can tell, the sleeve adopts the silhouette of the kimono sleeve, the Japanese icon. The V-neck from the corset is also inspired by kimono. It can be wear into two different ways. The thin pleated pattern on the corset is mimicking the rib on our waist. The tie-up pen is my most favorite pieces out of the 10 pieces government I made in this collection. Refer to the traditional Japanese tying pants, I came up with this design pen that does not need any zipper or button. The snake skeleton structures are destruct in half and then put onto the two legs. It is the concept of a snake having two legs like the snake monster shifting, shape shifting into humans. But don't worry, it's all from my imagination. The look tree, a V-neck top with a wrapped skirt. This look is called Futakuchi. The two mouth monster is quite obvious why I named it, cause the sleeve of the top are actually the image of two opening mouths. The facing of the sleeve, which is the inner layer of the sleeve is in red to indicate that their mouth. The back of this top has a spine bone fabric manipulation on it to add a bony feeling. The silhouette of this look mainly come from Tengu, who is always ready to fight wearing a warrior outfit. With the attendance of another yokai and Enra who takes the smoky form, is welcome in this look. That's why I added netting on the bottom of the wrap dress, adding a touch of mis mystery, a mystery warrior that has two mouths and a scar on its back will be another folk tail. The final look is another three-piece look with a bottom flare dress, an elastic short pant, and a hip belt with leg skirt. I named it Toby Habi. In English, it means a flying snake. From the first glance, uh, I'm sure you can count how many snakes are on the dress. Yes, it's four, because it's look four. 
The pattern pieces of the snake are separate into five pieces so that I can move the angle of the stripes around to make the snake appear more mover. I know the flying elements might not be as obvious as the snake you can see all over the dress but is there at both the side back of the dress it is pleated at a flare angle to accue the image of a pair of feathered wings i have to make it this way because i don't want any 3d wings on my ready to wear collection because that will cause like a very obvious wing we might be able to blend in to the crowd with this outfit, but it will hit people somehow and we don't want to cause any fight just by being different. So attention to my bottom government that represent most of us as they are hidden underneath the dress. It is like we are hiding our true self from the public. It's okay that we don't feel comfortable enough to show our true self out yet. We are always learning at every stage of our life, but at least we acknowledge who we are, accepting them and embrace them with proudness. Not showing them, but at least I know that they are here with me and I don't lose myself and blindly follow the majority. So this is the end of my presentation. Before ending, I would like to give a special thanks to my sister. She has been helping me throughout the journey in government fitting and photographing before she was being forced to quarantine alone for two weeks for being meeting up with her friend during this pandemic. So now I'm passing the screen to my friend Hui Jun. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Hun Hui Jun, is a student from a Bachelor of Fashion Design in Raffles University. Today, I, I would like to present my mini collections with the team of Missing You. First of all, let me introduce about my collections. Uh, this collection is a ready to wear spring summer 2022 women's wear and the theme is missing you and the starry sky or night sky will be applied in this collection to show a feelings of missing. Um, maybe you all will curious about uh, why I will come up with these kinds of abstract theme and it is actually it is an inspiration due to the COVID-19 because uh, during the pandemic issue, there are many of people lose their family unexpectedly and moreover, some of the people they forced to separate with their family and they cannot meet because of the MCO and they are able to travel to visit their families or friends. And my father also uh, have to go to Singapore for working and unable to come back due to the COVID-19. So I suddenly poke up with these kinds of idea to become my team and concept. Besides, the inspirations was coming from the Japan's, uh, Japanese traditional fashions, which is the kimono fashions, as everyone knew it, and also the samurai body armor. Now I am talking about the theme and concept. Uh, the theme of the collection called the Missing You, as I mentioned at the beginning, and in my opinion, there is almost nothing more precious feeling than reunions with someone you miss in the world, and. However, reunions would not taste so sweet if it were not for the desire to occur in the absence of, an, of someone. And this feeling is expressed in countless way in the eternal years. Sometimes it can be hot badly when you are missing someone you love because the reunion is not easy or unable to achieve it. And missing someone could be heavy, but it could be sweet and solid. We will learn how to find a way to overcome it and then missing someone can become as a form of love 
and it is often to say that the brightest star in the sky is the person that you are missing and it seems a way for the people to consign their miss on the starry sky for those who have passed away and people believe that they will turn into the brightest star for those lover friends and family who cannot meet due to some issue uh, such as the distance and looking at the starry sky and imagining that we are all under the same sky will uh, maybe will feel a little bit consolations and however in this busy and rapid era people have not uh, seen the starry sky for a long time already and the hustle and bustle of city over help the tranquility of the night sky and the light of a uh, neon light cover the glimpse of the starry sky and it seems that the beautiful night sky is hard to see in the city and then um the starry sky is lonely and no people no sound and we seem to be close but in fact it will take tens of thousands of years to break through and it's star like an unfulfilled wish and uh which burns to ash in the dark and then the starry sky is a kind of longing and a kind of yearns and what it brings to us is endless thinking and imaginations. And some people also will think that the star are the people who comes and goes in our life. And with the passage of time and age, some people will have uh, have gradually filled with their work and life is less time to rest at home. And sometimes when we stop, we will like missing someone. And so in this collection, besides of using the starry sky to become my main element to bring out my concept, I also want to raise the awareness about our life is our life is all fulfilled by the world. And we will need some free time to enjoy our life or com uh, to accompany with our family also. And now stay the all people are busy with their career, but uh, we only spend a little time to uh, families or friends, lover, and even those for ourselves. And so I hope my collection can like uh, evoke the people to slow down and enjoy their life. And then the collection will be inspired by the Japan culture uh, and traditional fashion. Uh, the Japan is that many of its cultural foundation can be traced back of, uh, thousands of years. And this is the case with the clothes at some points in the Jomon period, the Japan civilization really developed and agriculture has given them civilizations and allowing them to have more time to focus on their culture. And from the Jomon period to the end of the Kofun period, the kimono fashion was born. And then the kimono is a type of traditional uh, Japanese costume that consists of a layer or uh, rock mat of silk, suit pockets or with satin and then the kimono fashion is an indispensable part of the japan tradition and is so it is uh, very important to know how to wear the kimono correctly for them and depending on the level of the formality different kinds of uh, kimono will be used uh, on the different occasions in addition they also need to wear uh, the kimono in a very specific way uh, for example, the kimono are folded uh, from the collar of the kimono are folded from the left to the right, which is opposite to the American woman's clothing. And there are varieties of kimono, while the basis of the kimono is the kimono robes. And there are various of kimono styles, pattern, and color to match with the different seasons. The kimono also can be differentiated by the wave and also the sleeve. And some, for example, some is of the sleeve is short and some of the sleeve is the medium sleeve or the full length sleeve until the ground. And then the silhouette of my collection will inspire by these kinds of uh, kimono fashions. And then the kimono fashion will be transformed and innovated into a more modern way. Uh, for these collections also uh, get some inspirations from the Japan samurai. Uh, the, at the beginnings of the 10th century, the samurai became an elite force in various provinces of Japan. And then the samurai was expected to live according to the Bushido uh, street courts of any influence by the Confucianism, which uh, they're emphasizing the loyalty to the master. 
And then they wear the kimono in daily, which consists of an outer and inner way. Um, beneath the kimono, the warrior, warrior will wear the lawyer clothes, and then the samurai will wear a two-piece garment called the kamishimo over the kimono. The upper part was a sleeveless jacket with a, with a very exaggerated shoulder, uh, while the lower piece is a white flowing trousers called a uh, hakama. And I really like the broad shoulders lower as it shows the power and strong. And then in my collection, it can show the powerfuls of girls. And I think it can show the powerful of girls and it is no longer exclusive to the men only. And then in this current generation, the woman has the almost same capability and status with the men compared to the past. And so I transformed the men's wear the samurai uh, kimono and the strong elements to my uh, women's wear collections also. Besides, I also inspired by the samurai body armor uh, beside, except from their uh, kimono. Uh, the body armor has a very strong and hard texture. In my collection will appear some of the fabric manipulation which is imitate the structures of the body armor. And then the fabric manipulation give a soft and smooth touching feeling but it also can bring a 3D and solid visual impact. Uh, next, I will briefly uh, describe about the silhouette of my collections. Uh, the silhouette was inspired from the kimono fashion and then the silhouette is inspired by the Japan traditional clothing. And then the silhouette will be the clean and simple. In Japan tradition, the simplicity is very important thing until the end of the 19th century, the fashion has been pursuing the disappearing waistline. Uh, Japan kimono also appeared at this time. And then the kimono shirt can equate to the freedom as it is without the corset. And then the starry sky bring out the team of missing you and encourage people to slow down, to uh, see the people around us and enjoy our life. So this collection is comfort and beautiful as well as no didn't have uh, like too much functions and this characteristic to represent a slow life as we no longer pursue fitting clothes like a uh, short sleeve or fitted pants for work and in my collection i reference the kimono sleeve and hakama loose pan the kamishimo uh, broad shoulder silhouettes as well as the red over collar during the process of designing my collection, I start to develop the idea base of my concept. And firstly, I also have uh, research about the different kinds of the kimono and study their silhouette, their patterns and their characteristics, and then extract the elements and transform it into my design. Next is about the samurai body armor. I really inspired by the textures of the body armors and try to use the soft fabric to present it and show the feelings. Then I try my best, uh, I try to test with the uh, different kinds of the fabric manipulation in order to get the uh, feelings and texture that I like the most. So I have, and, uh, after the idea development, I have decided to use those elements in my design, which is the Kamishimo uh, silhouette, which is the very exaggerated broad shoulder and then the lactic smoking to imitate the textures of body armor and also the kimono silhouettes such as the sleeve and also the collar. And then this is a bit of fast sketch for my idea development. Uh, here is just a part from my sketching. And then be next I will talk about the fabric manipulations. I will continue to talk about my fabric man manipulation that I have used in this collections. Uh, before confirming the fabric manipulation, I do the research and some sampling to choose the best one and those fabric manipulation can really show the textual tree of fabric and looks 3D can bring a very strong visual impact. And then at the end of these two uh, smoking fabric manipulation, I uh, plan to apply in my collections. The body armor is like strong and hard. However, the Japan's traditional fashion is soft, peace, and also the simplicity. So I use the soft fabric to create the fabric manipulation. For example, 
uh, these kinds of latex uh, smoking is using the satin fabric, fabric which is the smooth and shiny and it looks 3D and structured but it is smooth and soft when touching. Besides, I also use these kinds of organza to create a smoking effect to show a sense of romantic and no longer stiff. And here is the instruction uh, that how I created the uh, fabric, this kind of organza smoking. And I using the cross tying method by using two pieces of long uh, fabric to uh, create it. And then I using the transparent thread to hand sew all the panel together. Uh, next is here is the step of the lactic smoking and let me show a video about uh, these fabric manipulations. And this is using the methods by stitching diagonally and then the square box will be drawn on the fabric as a dark line. Uh, next, I will talk about the colors in my collections. Uh, in my collection, the main color would be the blue and purple, which extract from the colors of the galaxy and starry. The white and black become the matching color. And then the blue is color is reminiscent of the open sky and calm sea. And then the purple represent the wisdom briefly and spiritually. The lighter shades of the purple are often used to suit off. Come a viewer, incorporate with a uh, lighter purpose to show a romance and mystery. Uh, next is the fabric that I use in my collection. I use the cotton and silky satin and also the organza in my uh, collection. The white cotton is used for the whole collection and I use the white cotton to dye into the galaxy colors. And then the cotton and silk satin is very soft and also the comfortable. And then the starry sky would be the main elements that apply in the collection. So I try to dye the fabric by myself using the tie dye method and then to create the starry sky feeling. And then I mix the blue and purple to come with the effect. Then I come out with a uh, collections uh, for my design. And here is the front view of collections. Here is the back view. Then I have selected the first, the four loop to produce it out. Uh, this is the first loop of my collection. The top is inspired by the wrap over color of the kimono silhouette beside. It consists of a kamishimo broad uh, shoulders cap and with the smoking fabric manipulation to show the texture and hardness of body armor. And the pants is loose pant with the tight and it can wrap over at the cuff. Uh, the second loop are the jumpsuits with an organza or vest and a white belt. This is a full length jumpsuit without a sleeve and the strap is adjustable. Beside the organza, a smoking vest is worn over the jumpsuit and the white belt also inspired by the kimono as they always will wear a white and thick belt at the waist and I make the belt become thinner and smaller. And then the third look is an inner shirt and outer uh, with an outer uh, short jumpsuit 
And then the inner shirt low, is loose and comfortable with a lovely puffy sleeve as I met a gaddles at the wrist. And the top of the jumpsuit is a broad uh, shoulder silhouette with the pleated and the fabric of top is using the tie-dye method. The fold look is a dress uh, with a kimono style sleeve and then the sleeve is fully used the fabric manipulation and one side of the sleeve has spent about like uh, four meters of fabric to create this kind of pattern and it is take time but I think it's very interesting. And then after confirming the design, uh, detailing such as the trimming, finishing, fabric and etc. A technical drawing is needed in order to proceed into a mass production. So in this, in the technical drawing will consist all of the sewing, detail and some of the uh, special instructions too. And here is about my uh, shooting ideas. I plan to use uh, the shadows to create the feelings of night sky and uh, using the LED light to represent the star. Besides, the background is clean and clear for the makeup and styling. I plan to have a very soft pastel makeup and the eyes I use the blue and purple to bring out the feelings of galaxy and star. And then the hairstyle is also relaxed and soft and some look I plan to have some hairstyle which is uh, uh, tie all the hair up and uh, similar to the samurai hair. And here is the outcome of the makeup feelings and hairstyle. Uh, now let me show the outcome of my collection. And here is the overall four front looks. And this is the back view of my collections. So at the end, let us enjoy a video. Okay, that's all for my presentations. I really appreciate this opportunity to share with you 
video all at here and thanks for your time and now i will pass my speech to the last presenter jace hi everyone i'm jace and today i'm going to present my mini collection and for this collection is mainly about the mixture of the traditional art and also the culture of japan and during this presentation i will introduce the inspiration um, color palette fabrication development and also the final look of the collection and so this is the mood board of the collection and it will be, i will be creating an autumn and winter men's fair collection ready to wear 2022 and the team name of this collection is sushi no nami which means sushi wave in japanese and from this collection i was inspired from the japan traditional dish and also the traditional art the great wave and as shown in the mood board the wave is about strike the boot as the there is an enormous monster and after my research there is a meaning of this history art is that symbolize that the unpredictable force of the nature that weakness and the weakness of the human being and it just like the today's COVID-19 pandemic and furthermore I have learned the crochet technique during this period and I found that the texture of the crochet is same with the sushi the rice it is soft and fluffy so I decided to apply this technique in my collection and for the Japanese traditional dish it was become popular in japan because there is many sushi chef in tokyo went back to their hometown after the great kanto earthquake in 1923 so sushi is a significant food for the japanese people the reason is affordable healthy and can eat the fresh fish all the time and also the sushi sushi is small and tiny it can actually help busy people eat quickly and not necessary to wait for a long time and for this man beside this robot and i draw some pattern on his garment is to express that how i express the detail on this collection and next this is the color board of the collection the color is the monochrome blue color and mix with the orange color and this type of the color mixture actually create a contrast blue was collected from the wave art and the orange and white color was collected from the traditional dish and in color well the opposite color of blue is orange so in this collection will be more visual impact and furthermore this is the fabric board of the collection the garment will be mainly using the denim fabric as the base and I will using the milk cotton yarn to create the detailing. And the color of the yarn is following exactly the same color from the collection board. And besides that, I have done a research about the denim fabric. And denim, actually denim, Japan denim fabric is the most expensive denim because of the dyeing technique, thickness of fabric, hardware details and also the weaving method and this method of production actually made the denim fabric become durable mm. and also able to maintain a long time and after that i have done a research about the japanese lifestyle and from these pictures we can feel that the busyness of the people and as we can see some of them are wearing their workwear uniform while having a milk in the evening and it feels like finally have a rest after a busy work day so in addition i have done my collection silhouette research and during this pandemic period i would like to choose the high school japanese high school uniform medical personal uniform and also the police uniform and this collection will having the mixture of these three types of uni uniform and the reason is these three types of profession is badly affected by this pandemic for example students cannot attend to attend face to face class and medical personnel and police are need to perform tasks to control the confirmed cases 
and after that this is the silhouette board of the collection the silhouette will be loose and straight cut to allow the movement the detailing part will flow around the garment like the pattern of wave and behind the model there is a sample i made from the actual fabric and then i start having the pattern research to do the pattern development and next this is the research notes about how I name my collection and also keep experiment how to mix these two elements in one. And then I try using the different colors to design and develop the pattern. And I use Photoshop to edit the illustration. I create a navy blue background to represent the denim fabric. and. I'm using the brush to draw the crochet pattern according to the wave pattern. And other than using the pattern of wave, I also try using the movement of the professionals as the pattern. And this is my progr progress of sketching. And when designing the pattern, I try copy and paste or using the reflection tool to create a new pattern and design and i also try to use the yarn to sew the sew out the pattern and like in this picture i try make a shell stitch crochet according to the pattern i draw and after that i try make the crochet into a ball shape and make it into a rice ball just keep experiment so furthermore, I keep I pin the crochet on the mannequin to create a new pattern and also have a check of the effect before doing the actual. And next, when I'm doing the sketches, I'm using the Photoshop to do the illustration because it is easy to get the color and I'm able to mix and match the pattern and check the final result. And this is these are my sketches and furthermore I have done a few of silhouette toi after I confirm my collection silhouette and I hang the garment on the holder take picture then start having a detailing illustration on the picture and after that I start choosing my actual design So in addition, after choosing the actual design, I start adding the crochet picture on the illustration, just like checking for the final effect. So next, this is the final mini collection lineup. The four look that I will make up is the first four look, and every piece is made out of the name, and the detailing will made up from crochet. So this is the front view. So this is the back view. So after choosing the outfit that I want to make out, then I start planning the structure of the garment and how to going to wear the garment. And so all of these four looks have two separate pieces. And in this stage, I start order the fabrication and also the materials. And next, I also start making the little samples of finishing by using the actual fabric to see the result. Like this, I do the finishing, the seam line, and also the buttonhole. Just keep trying. And then, we move on to the fitting session. So, before using the actual fabric to sew, we confirm the size and the cutting by using 12 first so these are the pictures that I take on the first fitting session to have a record. So this is the first look and second look. And this is the third and fourth look. So for this first fitting session, I can see the silhouette is more clearly and understand which part I should make a correction. And after I having a correction in the first fitting session, 
then we are having the second fitting session. And some of the pieces I try to use the actual fabric to sew and also start adding the crochet detailing. And so this is the first look and second look. And the next one is the third and fourth look. So in the second fitting session, I already confirmed the size and the proportion. Then I start proceed to sew the garment by using the actual fabric. So next, these are some pictures and video I took during the production making. So when I feel tired of sewing, then I use the rest time on sew crocheting and after I have enough rest then I continue my sewing just keep repeating to done my work and next this is the work of the progress of making the actual garment and after that I doing the final touch up for the garment like checking the crochet stitch and sewing the buttonholes and in this stage I also start prepare the accessories to match with the outfit So the next part is the photo shoot. So we need the photo shoot plan to bring out the feeling of the collection. So I decide to have a retro urban feeling of the collect the photo shoot for this collection. And the main elements of this type of pictures are flashlight and also the Kodak and Polaroid frame. The flashlight will be able to let the detailing more contrast and able to show the layering of the details and the background I want to keep it simple and so I choose the white color background and able to pop up the garment and the makeup will be simple also just need some control and highlight to highlight the masculine feel of the model and then the accessories I will choose the boots and also the safety glasses that which will wear by the medical professionals so furthermore, the opposing mood board is a must for a model to let him have a concept and also understand how to pose. So I prepared front view, side view and also for myself how to photoshoot the detailing. And now I would like to show you guys the final look of the outfit. So this is the look one. It was the high collar cropped jacket with the uh, crochet details and matched with the sleeveless jumpsuit. And the next look is look two. It was a, it was a high collar long sleeve shirt and the crochet details was applied on the endowment area. So this top was matched with the trousers with elastic waistband and the special part for this top is the opening is on the back side and now we move on to the look tree it was a high collar long sleeve full length jumpsuit and also matched with the crochet apron and the apron was removable from the trousers and the last look is a jumpsuit matched with the web skirt and the crochet detailing was only applied on the inner part of the skirt you guys can have a look and the next one is i want to show a, a short video of my fashion photo shoot and this is some photos i take when photo shoot session so let me do a short conclusion here so in conclusion through this collection that full of art and culture i hope that um, everyone can remind that the beauty of another country even we are not able to travel so these are some videos that we took during the photo shoot session so i take the pictures myself so lastly i was grateful that my friend and my family are willing to help me complete my photo shoot assignment and that's all for my sharing. And lastly, we are like to thank you for your time and attention today. We are grateful that we have the opportunity to sharing with you today. And we wish you have a nice day. Stay home, stay safe.